for the guys standing in the back if you want. There is still some seats available up front. Easy. Um, no pressure coming after a presentation which is given by Bart Basens and Veronique. I can assure you. But, uh, and it's not every day that, I, that I've got the pleasure to uh, present in front of uh, such a crowd. So first of all, thanks a lot for uh, attending this and also our presentation. Thanks a lot to Philip and to Bart also for the opportunity that you're giving us so that uh, we can tell you a little bit more about the analytics journey within ING. Um, my name is uh, Merik Potier. I am project manager for advanced predictive analytics within ING. And I'm also the functional team manager of the advanced predictive analytics team. And I'm going to present with uh, Thomas Carret, who is a data scientist in the team. Um, maybe first remark before we really start. Um, it was also highlighted by uh, Bart at the very beginning. So uh, analytics in banking can be used in different kinds of domains uh, and for different kinds of use cases. Uh, what I'm going to tell you about it and what Thomas is going to tell you about it is focused on the marketing side of the story. Yeah? It is there where advanced predictive analytics within ING Belgium has actually emerged and where we started with the setup of, an, uh, of a data lab, if you want. So the framework of this presentation, uh, basically we are going to, um, uh, to discuss the analytical ecosystem within the bank. Eh? So there are several components in there. Of course, everything starts with a data. Eh? You've got to have a good data layer on which you can build further on for your analytical activities. Next to that, we will talk also briefly about the strategy. Why did we start it with advanced predictive analytics within ING Belgium? We we'll also talk about uh, the tooling that we are using, and you will see we will make a difference there between our classical uh, BI environment and then our more advanced environment as well. We will give you more information about that and also the type of competencies that are required. Also classical versus advanced analytics. And then last but not least, we will also talk about the sponsors because of course, when you have analytics, you need to be able to make it live. Eh? You need to have use cases that are relevant also for the business that can create certain opportunities also that can create added value for the clients. We will briefly discuss this as well. Um, but let's start with the basics, which is of course the data. Now, Within ING Belgium, we also had the, uh, had the desire, we still have it, uh, by the way, it's not stopping, it is ongoing, to further expand our, uh, our data sources. Huh? So we are actually sitting on massive amounts of data, and every bank is sitting on massive amounts of data, um, which we are not exploiting at this point in time, not fully exploiting at this point in time, definitely. Eh? There are still lots of types of data that we have not been looking into it because we didn't have the appropriate tooling to do so, because we didn't have the appropriate competencies to do so. Um, and of course, uh, it's there, big data, the big buzzword and so forth. Uh, did we start with advanced analytics because big data is uh, being seen as a hype by many? Well, no. You will see further in the presentation, for us it was the next logical step in order to make sure that we can just exploit a little bit more the data that we have uh, within the bank. And when we talk about uh, big data, uh, I guess that you have all seen the four Vs. Uh, some talk about three, I have already heard seven Vs and so on. I mean, it's uh, basically about definition uh, that everybody wants to give it to it. Um, but for us, indeed, we have several characteristics, several concerns, if you want, uh, with regards to, uh, to the data. First of all, and I think it is typical for the banking environment, uh, as I said, we're sitting on massive amounts of data. And this data can be very granular. Eh? When we talk about transactions, when we talk about click data, um, when we talk about communications that we have also with clients, all of this is just a massive amount. And one way or the other, we need to deal with it. And it's not only a massive amount, it is also pouring in into the company. Imagine all the type of transactions that you have in one day ac across several millions of clients, of course. Huh? Uh, imagine what it is in a year, okay? Um, so it goes very quickly. This velocity has increased a lot and we need to deal with that. Another 
uh, another characteristic, which is very important, is also the variety. Right now, why haven't we been exploiting all of the data that we could exploit within, uh, within our, um, our organization? Well, basically, it is because there were lots of types of data that we could not handle. Uh, again, we didn't have the technology for it. We didn't have the competencies for it. Because these data are very much yes, different sometimes. Uh, you have very various types. And we need to deal with this variety. Um, up to recently, we mostly worked with structured data sets. Right now, we wanted to make the move towards also all of these unstructured data that we have at our disposal within the bank. And then, last but not least, veracity. Uh, we are shortening, shortening data lineage, which can also have, of course, its impact on safeguards, which has its impact on data quality. Basically, when you see all of this, it is clear. If you want to take analytics a step further within your organization, you need to think differently. You need new competencies, new skills. You need new type of tooling, a new type of technology. Where were we and where are we now? Basically, when you have a look at it, and this is what well, said past, take a good year ago, we were sitting on, uh, on this data. Um, at least the data that we captured at that point in time. Uh, and for the record, this is all also in-house data. And of course, when you have your basic layer of then at that time structured data, we serviced basically the retail segments and we were doing descriptive analytics and predictive analytics in a classical BI environment, which type of tooling and so on. Thomas will tell you more about it. Um, and it was mostly used uh, for really business purposes, industrialization of models, making sure that we get output, that we can uh, have uh, scores that we can use for business opportunities, that we could target the right client for, with the right offer at the right point in time. But of course, there is something missing there. If you want to make the move towards unstructured data, and if you want to have the possibility to explore a little bit and not only be result-driven if you want, then you need to move towards another type of analytics, this advanced predictive analytics, as you see. And so we started, of course, with enlarging the base. Uh, not only structured data, but also capturing unstructured data and starting to work with that. And if you have more data, of course, then you can already do much more predictive and descriptive analytics as such in your classical environment as well. But, and that's an important one, you can also start exploring with, uh, within this new unstructured data that, you've, that you have captured uh, by setting up in-house a lab, an exploratory environment, in which you can really test new things out, in which you can uh, try to deliver proof of concept, eh? and in which basically you can try a lot, a lot, a lot, and you will probably fail very often, but you're going to learn a lot. And that's very important. I give the word to Toma for the rest. Mm -hmm. The point of the presentation is really to try to give actually the message that um, you can really have a room for happy data scientists uh, to work in banking. Uh, there is really a relevant strategy to, to do that, actually. And, um, and uh, if you want to ask questions about more uh, what, what we really did in practice, uh, models we built, you can uh, always ask me after, of course. So um, the first uh, thing is that you want to uh, go elsewhere. You want, want to explore other things. And what actually is in place uh, at ING uh, in production is really a big SaaS environment uh, with pipes into Excel and PowerPoints uh, or uh, conversely Excel into uh, SaaS. And basically it's one big tool. It's a very powerful tool actually. But if you have only a hammer, you know that the thing, of course, everything starts to look like a nail. So it's not always the right tool, actually. So one big shift, the, the, the really the nice thing that management realized, it was the, the fact of trying to open into new tools. And for that, you need to test new tools. So in this 
then you have to build a lab because you have to have a separate environment to test those tools. You have to also be open to many things that are not necessarily mature for business, business or anything. And the, 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 we mostly work with open source tool, but it's not because we are married to open source actually. It's because we, well, in big data, it, lots of the really state-of-the-art tools are open source, so this is one thing. It's also a very open community, so it, also in statistics, uh, it's, it's often the state-of-the-art uh, in there. Uh, but you can see also Tableau for visualization for, for playing with it. And it's uh, really, the point is to be able to pick the right tool at the right moment when, when you need it, uh, basically. But of course, you have to communicate with business also, so PowerPoints is mandatory, but anyway. Um, and of course, this is a very different uh, setup. And um, you actually see a really symmetric uh, thing with what the skills are, the skills necessary for, for business analysts on one side and data scientists on the other side. So for business analysts, really, the point is to uh, be able to really rapidly extract knowledge from data. And actually, it's really easy to create a histogram. It's very difficult to create the right one that will answer the right question. And so you really need the business understanding, uh, in-house data knowledge about most data that is available, the quality of the data. You really have to know the business. This is key. And of course, you need to know statistics. But you can really do very simple things or more complicated things, but very well-established ones where um, what is really key is knowing what goes in your model and dealing with that and then understanding what comes out and being able to leverage the insight you gained. And so this is the key things. Of course, visualization is important, but it's not really uh, the key. You have to be able to convey a message in a standard way, in an accepted way, or be a bit technical, of course, uh, but uh, not that much, actually. But if you go into the more lab where you have to explore and do new stuff, you actually have to know the code. You have to know everything that exists and pick the right tool at the right moment. It involves coding skills because, of course, you are facing things that are not major, that are, that are state of the art. So you have to be able to do some, some bricolage. And also on the methodological part, the uh, algorithms and everything, it's the same story, actually. You pick the right tool at the right moment. Then, of course, comes the problem that you are bringing business out of its comfort zone, right? So you are starting to bring new ideas and they are not necessarily open to them. So you really need this good storytelling. You, you need to actually bring them in a, in a story which they understand end to end and finally they end up in a territory they didn't know but they understand why it's necessary to do it. And actually, it's after the fact you realize it matches very well a data scientist profile. Because like for big data, you have problems you, that leads to big data. It's not the buzzword. Again, here, the data science, it's just a flag you put after the fact, after what you realize what were your needs, actually. And of course, you, you're, if you also ask, uh, incredible business understanding, uh, uh, thorough in-house data knowledge, then you are really hunting for a unicorn. That's, that's what people are talking about. But then you just tune those skills down. And you bring those people into an agile process where they actually can interact enough with experts in the matter of internal things that they are brought up to speed during the, the process of the project. It requires more time for a project, of course, but really by working in an agile way, you are able to um, really, well, yeah, make up for this uh, laugh, lack of expertise, if I can say it this way. Uh, now, of course, it's all well, it's a kind of strategy, but still, the question stays whether uh, ING is ready for, for, for such uh, uh, experiments. And actually, this is one nice thing about ING marketing, is that it's actually, for a non-data-driven uh, 
uh, business model uh, uh, company, it's, uh, it's the data literacy is good. It's actually really good because it's been for a long time that they, they actually took the first wave of, uh, of predictive analytics and really brought them into being a major player in marketing operations. And so actually most of the contacts, the commercial contacts are made by, uh, are predicted, well, come out of models. But you don't have only that, you have many other models that bring insight to the, uh, to the business, that bring um, new stat strategies and everything and raise new questions of, uh, for the business. And so actually many managers are very open to that and are even asking for more. Of course, you don't have only that. It's not like Dreamland or anything. But still, I think that, relatively speaking, the data literacy is very good. Uh, now, of course, it's, it kind of saturates because it's only so much you can do with aggregated and standard data that you can put into a server, a BI server, and that fits on the, the hard drive that is actually old from from uh, several days when you, you, they, it reaches you, there are limits. So there are still uh, here, I mean, last year, 40% of contacts which were based on pure business insight, uh, the, the knowledge of the, the salespeople. And, and actually, um, that's when we reach those, those milestones where you think about advancing, the, the, creating a new project or anything, where you, you, you want to try new things and, um, and new data. And, uh, and so that's when the lab comes into play. And here it's just recent exploratory projects. We are pretty young. And, um, and but, but this is, well, an example of uh, where we did text mining for predictive analytics. Uh, basically, you have um, a, a customer and then you have his relationship manager, the discuss, it leads to a note. It's really for actually a wealthier class of customers where you have this relationship, you have those notes, and the idea was to try to leverage this. No pressure, actually really no pressure. There are s several milestones and, and, uh, and it's just try, just try. And the data set is quite small. Uh, it's, it's so, so we can use R, it's very easy to test. The noise level is very high because people are just taking nodes for themselves and for other reasons, so it's, it's, it's really uh, actually difficult. But really what was nice is that we had a clear business goal, very clear business goal. And, uh, and so we can just work for that. And, uh, and it's nice because we have really lots of time to do it. Uh, we have a team. It's not a single person doing on the uh, working on the job. It's it's a team, and we split the tasks. We can arrange ourselves to try different things. People taking riskier paths. People taking safer paths to be certain that we deliver. We just organize ourselves, and then it's 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 really this. Well, we are trying to do something. It takes a bit of time, but then uh, it, it's very interesting. At the end, we learned a lot. Um, another. Uh, path it's well okay graph analytics uh, it's uh, many people talk about it here it's really for knowledge discovery and from uh, transaction data between uh, business clients basically and at this point since you can't really sample a graph in any easy way uh, it's really not always very safe to do it uh, you have to take the whole bunch for a time period which is long enough that you have a representation of, or you safely have the representation of what you need in the data. And so we had to use uh, uh, Hadoop, we had to use uh, Spark in uh, GraphX to actually speed things, bit, uh, thing, well, speed things up and uh, have a shorter iteration loop. And so that was uh, very interesting. And actually, what we really realize here is that people want to have networks and everything, but when you really come with something, they don't necessarily understand what you are talking about, even though they ask for it. So actually here, the business goal is less clear, and they are more uncomfortable in where you bring them. So building bottom-up the logic is really successful, actually. You really bring very in, well, intuitive logic into your network and you do it by hand and you don't use 
sexy machine learning or, or anything. You, you just build like this. And then suddenly they start to see the value in what you are doing. They start to see patterns that you see, you explain and everything. And then you are at a stage where you can start to apply big clustering, uh, page rank, or these kind of things, and they understand what you are doing. And this is, well, we are not totally there yet, I guess, but uh, still it's, uh, it's really this bottom-up construction and leading the business to complex, uh, a complex world is, is really a, an interesting path. So basically, is it possible to do exciting sci data science at ING? I really think yes, uh, it is. Um, and well, yeah, I nearly want to say it's a piece of cake actually in this setting uh, to serve the data science wave. Um, well, yeah, so it's the sponsors that uh, make it possible, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? We, we have time for one question, and then from then on, we'll have a two minutes break. Uh, so if, if you have one question, preferably, preferably from a girl this time. <laughs> from a boy then. <laughs> no questions. <laughs> Just one question. Is, uh, you have explained uh, you have the traditional BI systems and traditional analytics, and now you have the data lab. Are you part of one team, or is there the traditional team and you, young guys, next to it doing your stuff? <laughs> it's, uh, it's not an easy uh, question, actually. Um, there is a lot of cooperation between the two teams. So yes, you have a dedicated team. Uh, which you call then the business analyst, which are working on uh, the predictive analytics, the, the more classical um, tooling and classical environment. Um, and then you have the team of uh, advanced predictive analytics, which is a multidisciplinary team. It's a mixed one. You have uh, part of uh, the business analyst team, which are detached from that team and that are put into the advanced predictive analytics team because they have the right competencies for it. But you don't only have a data scientist in that team. You also have developers in that team with an IT profile to make sure that the tooling that was shown here, well, that it is made available, that it works, that it runs, that the environment is there so that the data, data scientist can do his job accordingly. Okay. Well, yeah. 